Today, we're playing with beaver. Ken's yeah. gonna comb out a beaver and then we're gonna tack it up. So I got one here, it's a real pretty black one. That is very pretty, beautiful. So I'm gonna get this one tanned. So this is a beaver board here. I made these boards when I first started beaver trapping. This is rough cut, I think Aspen. I was over on a cranberry marsh and I didn't have a board. I didn't know nothing about nothing. Yeah. So we just slammed this together over at the cranberry marsh where I was trapping back in 1987. That's how old this board is. I got only two or three of these left. So I didn't make that many because I wasn't catching that many. I was just learning. Right. Like I said, 1987, how many years ago was that? Quite a hundred. It was a while back. So yeah, this is an antique, but one behind Chris there, that was one of my grandpa's. So that's probably 30, 40 years older than the boards I made. So that's probably was made in the 50s or 60s? Uh, probably 60s and 70s maybe. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So these circles are so you get your size right. These are just basically right. a guide. This yeah. is a North America fur auctions, which is now gone, defunct. defunct. This they this is the pattern they wanted. So this is what pretty much all the Canadians use for fur harvesters and alpha and it's a pattern you can get, comes in a quarter sheet of stiff cardboard and you get your center and you draw your quarter line and you flip it over and you, you, whatever. That's a whole nother video. Yeah, I know. I well, need to start on the head though. Yep. So I'm just kind of going by feel here. I haven't stretched very many this year, so. And you just tack in a little bit and use finishing nails because they come out the easiest, right? And use these over and over and over. Yeah, these. Yeah, I've been using this can of Quaker Oats here since probably the late 80s also. That's an old can there. So, my yeah. newer boards, I actually changed the color so I knew which line I was right, on. Right. I got smarter as I got older. Right, I can show those. So you're on the third to the outside, you're just kind of guessing as you're you stretch. Right, so I'm you just kind of getting a feel here. It's gonna be probably about right. Yeah, you get a feel. You can always move it over a little bit if you have to. This beaver's already been fleshed. All the fat, grease, and meat chunks and everything has been taken off. Kenny did that last night. So then you're just doing fours all the way around. Get a little tight there already. I might have to shrink it in a little bit. The front shoulders are narrower than the behind, so you try to tack out more on the top end first. I got a sore thumb because I smashed it so many times, I can't hardly hang onto these nails. Tight, but so this all gets trimmed off. This is the lips and the nose. This all gets trimmed off in the end here. Just a lot of tap, tap, tapping. It's nothing exciting here. Some guys use uh, hoops, right? Some guys use hoops with hog rings. Some guys use staples. There's more than one way to skin a cat. This is just what I got. This is how I do it. This is kind of old school. Probably the slowest way. And how many boards do you have? Um, I don't know if I got maybe a hundred. Yeah, one year I remember we put everything up. I came up in like a middle of winter and we did both sides of the boards a lot. Yeah, of them the double. plywood, the plywood ones you can do both sides. But it's not as easy to get the nails in and all. Yeah, these that's why I like these older boards. They take a nail nice. I can reuse these nails a million times, they don't bend. The plywood boards, man, you go through nails. Because that, that plywood is so hard. And of, and of all the wood, basswood's about the best. Basswood, yeah. I got some basswood boards. Um, I think them probably them green ones are bass, but the blue ones are pine. Yeah. 
I just threw whatever color paint I had in a can on them just so, you know. so that so when I draw the lines it would have something to right. you know give you some viewing because you know, just on the bare board like this you can see these, these lines aren't very clear so I just set, threw some paint on so that I could see my lines better no other reason than that I had that beautiful green paint over there actually pretty cool probably the funkiest beaver board you'll ever see the other time I came up and we put together all the boards and double sided them. We had the garage was literally full. We had them, you know, yeah, up against each we, other. I think we could stretch a hundred at a time. Yeah, we filled the garage. Yeah, we that was the heat and yeah, it turned on the fans. And yeah, that was a lot of stretching, a lot of flushing. How long do you leave them on the boards? Till they're dry. What average time is that? I don't know. It's when I get time to take them back yeah. off, usually. Yeah. That's another reason I don't. You don't put the nails in real tight. You can look at these. You can see how they're all kind of pulling. Yeah. Some of them are actually. Pulling. They're actually pulling out. Yeah. And you'd rather have that to tear the hide. Right. It's better for that nail to be pulled out than to tear the hide. So. You don't have. You don't have to have them in there very hard. You know, like these ones that are in here now, these probably been dry for two weeks already. We've been too busy trapping. I haven't had time to take care of them, but it's time to get caught up a little bit. Well, the ones we're stretching are the ones you're making that you're going to make into hats. Right, or... these are going to get tanned. They're going to be hooped and hanged on the wall, or they're going to be hats made, whatever. So anybody that buys hats from us, this is uh, one of the beaver. Yep. We got to do about 20 or so so far that we got orders for. Right. And I'm sure there'll be more because everyone needs a beaver hat. Yeah, well, if you live where it's cold, you should have one. Or if you're just American. Yeah. If you're not American, you should That's, have one. You know, this too. country was founded on beaver trapping. That's right. Settled the country. We're, we're just about like uh, antiques. <laughs> well, we are that. <laughs> We're almost like pioneers here, or leftover pioneers, I'm not sure which. Yeah, this yeah, country... Yeah, the beaver was... trade established the United States, all the routes, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the highway systems are actually based on where the routes were. Yes, where the fur routes were. They were before any of the settlers came, before... They were the first people to explore, besides, the, obviously, the Native Americans that lived here. The beaver trade is what started the country. I don't know if it started it. But well, yeah, that's why people came here. It was That was the, the money in the beginning. That's how they made it. Yeah, the there was wars fought over the fur trade business in this country. Do your research, but here's a back leg. leg and then we're gonna cut some lips off this just kind of cleans it up there's really no fur value there anyway. right this all gets trimmed off anyways so we got a there's nail in here now. You know, somebody's going to ask how many nails? As many as it takes. As many as it takes, because every beaver is a different size. So if you want to take a still picture of it and count them, you can do it. I'm not going to waste my time. i got too many to do. I just kind of make sure it looks pretty nice. You know, it ain't perfect, but when they tan it, it kind of shrinks up to whatever it's going to be anyway. So. This is good enough for me. There's guys who do a lot nicer job than this. But like I say, this is good enough for me. Doesn't really affect the price as nope. long as it's dry. So then the other thing people ask, they want to know how big that is. 
And how do you measure a beaver? Well, let me get a tape, I'll show you. Sixty inches, anything over fifty-five inches is a is a nice beaver. Fifty-five, sixty, and bigger than that is even better, but so there's thirty by thirty. So 60, and then you check it this way, it should be pretty close to the same. 32 should be close to 28, 26. Howdy, oh, George! So here's a couple blankets, that's the term they used, which is a 65 inch beaver or bigger. Bigger than 65, like you get 70 inch, there's a super blanket, and after that there is nothing. And what's the biggest you ever stretched? 82. That's big. But these are, these are real nice beaver. Yep, real nice. So there they are. These are gonna get made into hats, or hooped, or something. These are the ones we just stretched, and these are the ones that got to come off. And we got a lot more to go. Yep. And these are the beaver here that we caught yesterday. We're going to go check traps now again, and these are just going to continue drying. And then when they're done drying, we'll take them over, put them over in the cold side of the garage where it's not heated, so they stay cool. And then we load them up in a few days and give them a ride to the fur buyer. Yep. You took a hundred and what, how many yesterday? All right, about 150-ish. We had another load of 199. 199 and another one of uh, 80, and then, I don't know, it's all kind of blurry. but. Yeah.